Romans 12 1 2, For this reason I make request to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you will give your bodies as a living offering, holy, pleasing to God, which is the worship it is right for you to give him. And let not your behavior be like that of this world, but be changed and made new in mind, so that by experience you may have knowledge of the good and pleasing and complete purpose of God. Paul pointed out three keys to serving God effectively. The first key, which was discussed in part one was, what we are to offer to God, which is our bodily dedication to Him. In this first part of this series, it was discussed that we must offer ourselves in the service of God on a daily basis. Secondly, Paul points out what we are to avoid, which is worldly contamination. As stated in the previous lesson, this part is really crucial and very difficult. Because we live in a world where we are being constantly bombarded with all kinds of corruption. And then there is the third key, which Paul points out for us is our goal that we must constantly strive for on a daily basis. Which is what we must achieve, a godly transformation. This brings us to the third key aspect of our service to God. And the final theme of this series. And this is the part that will be addressed in today's lesson. It must be crystal clear to all Christians that we have been saved in order to serve God through serving one another. Unfortunately, many church members are only concerned about church attendance, not realizing that serving God extends beyond the walls of a building. When Paul told us that yielding our bodies to the Lord is our reasonable service, he was letting us know what we have signed up for. The word reasonable comes from the same Greek word from which we get our English word logic. Therefore, Paul's first point was that yielding our bodies to the Lord is logical. Secondly, Paul uses the word service which is connected to the idea of worship. Therefore, that phrase means that yielding our bodies to the Lord is our logical service of worship before the Lord. In other words, when we are totally yielded to Him, it is the highest form of worship that we can render. Nothing says I love you to the Lord like disciples who have consecrated, and dedicated, their lives to God. Through serving one another just as Jesus did. Remember, in order for us to grow as a disciple of Christ, it will require sacrificial living. Only then can we achieve the spiritual transformation that God desires for our lives. Remember, in our text, Paul essentially said to stop being conformed to this world. He was referring to only displaying an outward image that does not reflect what is supposed to be on the inside of us. He explained through the letter to the Ephesians that it was our responsibility to take off our old man in order for our minds to be renewed by God. Ephesians 4 22-24 That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Remember, our transformation begins as our minds are being renewed. But, please keep in mind that the renewing of our minds don't start until we have started at least the process of putting off the old man. Have you watched any of my other videos? Have you ever noticed that I almost never use the word believer? It's because to only use the word believer without putting it in the context of serving God through our loving interactions with others is really disingenuous. Take note of this heinous misconception. It's really sad how Satan has tricked countless millions into believing that salvation is given by God through faith only. Despite what the Bible actually says. Ephesians 2 8-9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Take note of the same verse again. God saved you through faith as an act of kindness. You had nothing to do with it. Being saved is a gift from God. It's not the result of anything you've done, so no one can brag about it. Satan has lied through his preachers, to make it seem in the minds of countless millions that somehow your good deeds toward others, aka works, are not needed. But, that's not the point that Paul was making at all. Therefore, take note of what Paul said in verse 10, the very next verse. Ephesians 2:10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Also, take note of the same verse again. God has made us what we are. He has created us in Christ Jesus to live lives filled with good works that He has prepared for us to do. The point that Paul was making, was God doesn't want anyone to falsely believe that somehow they deserve to be saved because of their good deeds aka works. So they won't start bragging and boasting. Now for further clarity. Let's consider what James wrote. James 2 17-18, So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good works? I will show you my faith by my good works. James 2 24, you see then that a man is justified by works, and not by faith only. You should at least read the entire chapter, T 
taking notes of the examples James gives to prove his point. I hope that you have gained a better understanding of what the Bible actually says. Paul said, 1 Thessalonians 5 21, but examine everything carefully, and after you have proved it, only then accept it. This is why I often tell you to ask for biblical proof of everything that you are being taught. Hebrews 12 1, since we have such a huge crowd of men of faith watching us from the grandstands, let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back. And especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and trip us up, and let us run with patience the particular race that God has set before us. The point for us to grasp is that our devotion to God can only be realized through our obedience to God. In other words, how can we say that we are devoted to God, while continuing to be disobedient? Remember, Jesus pointed out, Matthew 6 19-24, No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other, you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. We can't praise and worship God on Sundays, while our lives reflect something entirely different the rest of the week. We can't straddle the fence. We can no longer hold anything back from God, we must trust Him with our, past, present, and future. Therefore, we must be totally and completely at His disposal. Far too many people want to be saved, on their own terms, instead of laying everything on the altar. Therefore, in order for us to reach the goal that God has set before us, we must understand that Christianity is a process of removal, of our old man not a one-time event. This is why Paul wrote, Philippians 2 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We must choose to follow the Lord for ourselves. Take note, 1 Peter 1 13-16, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Therefore, we must be sanctified for his service. This is what Jesus was talking about when he said to go make disciples. He wanted his disciples to teach others by both word and examples the same way he had also poured himself into their lives. Please keep in mind that in terms of Christianity, it is God that adds man to the church, but it is man that must decide to follow Christ's example. Remember, the world displays a false Christianity. Because they don't know God. Therefore, they portray an outward appearance of spirituality, but lack the inner devotion that is necessary to please God. Take note, Romans 10 2-3, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Paul wanted the church to understand that we have a goal that we should strive daily to achieve. It is important that we clearly understand that our devotions to God is made manifest as we stop our old habits, and change our worldly hangouts, in order that God can begin to heal our hurts and transform our lives. Always remember, Christians can only fail in life, if we refuse to present our surrendered lives on the altar of sacrifice. Now, just in case there may be someone watching this video who has never obeyed the gospel of Christ. It is crucial that you understand these biblical principles in this video as well as all of my videos. Teaches that a person must obey the gospel and be added by God to the body of Christ, which is his church Acts 2.47. Therefore, you must follow Peter's instructions in Acts 2.38, then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So please watch the other two videos in this series, as well as all of the other videos that I've posted in order to gain a better understanding of what, why, and how you must obey the gospel of Christ. Remember, you are investing in yourself by promoting the will and word of God through liking and sharing all videos with everyone you know. So that they too can become followers and are subscribers. So until the next time, Take care.